Hey guys, Mike here. And Meg. Hope you're all well. Out doing a bit of camping together. Yep. It's a bit of luxurious camping. We're not in bivvy bags or hammocks or anything. We're, we're just camping in the roof tent, spending some time by this beautiful lake. It's a really beautiful area, mm. isn't it? Yeah, I really like it. And it's got a nice abandoned cabin, which has a bit of spirit to it. But there's a lot of bats and things living in it and they must eat really well. I named this place on the map, on Gaia, as Mosquito Hell. They haven't been too bad now, but we've got this contraption. They sell something in Sweden called Thermocell and uh, it's kind of expensive, it's about 50, 50 pounds in the UK. A fisherman friend of mine, Fisker Lars, who's, some say he is a fish, he said to me to do this. So it's just like Norland's Guild tin with a Thermocell tablet on top and a candle and it heats up the tablet and then it releases some vapour. This was heaving with mosquitoes. We first arrived, uh, now it's really doable. Yeah, it's bearable. Yeah. You've got to make a demented noise to signal the, the feast, the beginning of the feast. Gobbly gob! <laughs> How's it going up there, Meg? Yeah, good. Just making the nest. So you can see we're really we're really roughing it tonight but uh, you know that's what the wagon's for that's what we built it for we called it home for a really really long time and it is nice to be back in it it's very convenient here in Sweden you have so many kind of tracks and a lot of accessibility to at least the edges of wilderness parks and things so you can get him to beautiful places like this but this should be pretty nice now we're set up I'm gonna grab the rod head over to the lake and See that we can catch some fish. Hopefully you can hear me. This is uh, one of the places me and Meg canoed, as we mentioned in 2016. And we were out for, I think, a total of about four days. And there was a lot of portaging because it was really nice for the first day up to here. And when we arrived here, we thought we'd really taken a wrong turn on the map because we didn't expect this. And then the next few days, it's just portaging the whole time. A little bit of canoeing, then portaging, canoeing, portaging. It was really tough. And uh, we caught some perch and we had a bit of extra food and things, so it was okay. But sometimes it pays to pack light when you come out for these trips. Because before we went, you know, a friend of ours was kind of giving us loads of gear. These cast iron pans and pots and extra axes. And I was like, Meg wanted to take them. And I said, Meg, no, seriously, let's not take the, the extra equipment. Just pack your bag and make sure you can carry your own gear and that, that's exactly what you really should do if you can carry your own equipment and uh, you know it's, it's functional, it's versatile and it's organised it doesn't matter what obstacle you run into at least you can continue to carry your own equipment so um, especially when you're really when you're heading into the unknown is what I'm saying which we were so uh, yeah but anyway see if we can uh, catch some fish I had something but alas just scum of the water I showed you this pouch in my last video just a possibles pouch that I carry 
on my belt that Megan made for me. And I have a few things in here. and Obviously, I'm carrying this, which would normally be in the pack, but because I'm here like this, I've got it on me. Just some basic equipment to give me the opportunity to fish if I want to. Uh, some weights, some flies that were gifted to me by someone here in Sweden. And uh, hopefully I'll have a chance to use those one day. Some pike line, if you really do need that here. Lots of pike around. Got some barbed and barbless hooks. Some spinners and clips. In here, some larger lures or spinners. So uh, this one here is a 25 gram. This is really good for pike. And um, I quite like using that. That is a bit heavy for the rod I've got. It's better for the telescopic. This is a little bit lighter. Again, you can use that for pike too. Use caught perch with it as well, actually, to be honest. But they tend to go for a lot of things, I've found. And this one here I bought today. Just quite useful for uh, for the trout. I want to do some fishing by some by a hydro dam near us, and uh, a friend of mine said to me that this would be very very useful to uh, fish for trout. So I got this one, and I'll go and try that tomorrow. And this small lure here, which is actually one I I think I found this one a really long time ago, uh, just underwater, and it's quite good for just small perch and things like that. Yeah, sure. Please. Having no luck with the fish. What are you cooking, Meg? So we've got sweet potato and normal potatoes, which we're going to make into a mash. Sounds good. We've got kale. Oh. And we've got chicken <laughs> marinated in honey and mustard. That sounds amazing. Yeah. And bacon and avocado. Wow. I was thought that, we could that have as feast. well? Yeah. Do you know when we were in the camping store last year, just before the trip, and that yeah. guy like gave us the sales pitch? Yeah, and, uh, I know. We should have listened to we him. We should have actually listened to him. It was like an extra 50 quid or something, though. No, I think this one we had was uh, 50. Yeah. And he was like, oh, if you spend 70, you get this, the oh. Fuel Saver 3000. And we were like, no, oh, it. we don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get the one with the grill that we've never used, like the taster. Yeah. We've marinated the chicken in honey, mustard, salt and pepper. A lot of people have asked about Monts in the comments and in other videos and uh, about his breed and how he came to be and, and how he, why we own him. And uh, he's a St Bernard's crossed with a Ken Corsa. You were originally told he was crossed with a Great Dane, but that's come to be something different now. So you can see that in him as well. And uh, he's a very large dog, about 75 kilos, around about that weight. Fussy eater and uh, like a really lovely dog and we always say he came with the house we moved into here in Sweden but the story goes is the the lady who lived there had to leave and move to the city in high-rise high buildings for work and she didn't want to obviously take Monts with her because he would have a, a different kind of life and he's a bit of an outdoor dog and he loves this kind of thing but we came along and said we'd adopt him and so we have, and, and we've had him for a year now. Actually less than a year, probably seven months. And uh, yeah, he's, he's one of the family, he's an amazing dog. He, look at him, he's 
clocked the food. Meg's draining the kale. Oh, what is it, mate? Nay. But, uh, yeah, he's just kind of, um, when, when we first got him, he was very skinny. I think he was a little bit kind of stressed out about moving around and stuff. And, you know, he'd been going back and forth to the city, I, I guess, but, or I don't really know the story, but he, he was a little bit kind of stressed out. Now he's, uh, he's put on quite a bit more weight, but he's still a little bit ribby at times. We're trying to kind of fatten him up, but he is, but he is a little bit fussy and, um, he gets a tremendous amount of exercise now he's with us and I think I think that kind of contributes to him staying very lean. He's an athletic kind of build and uh, he's in great shape and he's eight years old. These dogs tend to live for maybe 10, 11 at the, the very best because he's a cross but I really hope he lives for a lot longer because he's kind of like a member of the family now and we really love him and yeah, it'd be really sad to see him go, so... But anyway, we don't really think like that. I, I just mean he's an old dog, but he's very nice, isn't he, Mons? <sighs> he's just a, a big old lump. Shall I take his harness off, Meg? Yeah. He doesn't really need it anymore, does he? All right. Be good. It's gonna be good. <laughs> it's not curry this time, at least. <laughs> Meg's famous curry. <laughs> we had curry a lot when we travelled. We do love curry though. Yeah. And it's an easy meal to make. It's a good meal, you know, chickpeas, rice. It's not bulky. Bit of, either. Bit of meat sometimes. And... Wow. really good. I think this is the best meal we've made yet outdoors. Mm. Mm. Are you licking the flavours off the ground? No, are you eating Phil? <laughs> Just because it's got chicken scent on it. It's time to go to bed. It's actually midnight here. You can see that it's light all around me still and it will continue to be this way all the time. So uh, in s summer here it never gets dark, which is pretty awesome if you like to get things done and you're not a fan of darkness. But obviously in the winter it's the other way around where you get in the, in the dead of winter it's only light for about four hours maximum and, and the daylight isn't very strong. So, um, you know, Two different sides of the coin, but time to go to bed. Meg's already up there, Monster's in his bed. And I think it's time to hit the sack. This is it. Hopefully I didn't bring any in. I'll just put the fly up quickly. Back in the old roof tent. Nice day. 
The morning slept very well. It's a really nice night. Obviously a bit tough when you're in the tent sometimes and it's daylight all the time, but uh, we have these things that go over your eyes and they do it does really help you sleep because it is quite light in the tent. But yeah, we're gonna do some fishing today. It's a really, really beautiful day, but we're not gonna fish here. We're gonna go back home and uh, make some stuff for the day and then go get some fishing permits in town and head to the hydro dam, which is like one of the two dams that surround the town we live in that generate electricity for the town. And you get a lot of fish there um, because the fish, little fish get sucked into the turbine and shredded. So a lot of big pike and all sorts of fish kind of swirl around the back end of the turbine picking up the shredded fish so hopefully we'll catch something because this spot here hasn't really yielded too much. I did get a couple of perch here the other day but they're really small and I've seen them jumping this morning for fly and they, they do look pretty tiny but yeah we'll keep trying. Where is it, mate? Is it another fly? Where is it? Mm -hmm. Did you get it? Perch, look at that. Yes. There we go. I just didn't want to take him out of the water because I didn't really intend to uh, hang on to him. I'm trying a new spot onto the other side of the river to a little, well, I say little, it's a, a really big eddy where things are a bit calmer. The water's quite deep and it's good for pike. So we're gonna try with some pike the other side, no luck on the trout. The couple next to us got a trout and it was about three or four kilos, they think, which is pretty good. So uh, no luck for us though, just some small perch. feels big on this rod. Oh. oh, I can see the lure. It's 
not, not a bad size pipe actually, can you see it? Yeah. Pretty good size, isn't it? Yeah, that's a really big size. Pretty good size. Mag's caught a fish. Most likely a pike. There's a lot of pike in this eddy here, in this kind of calm spot. How does it feel? Quite big. Yeah? A little bit of... Uh, I mean, it could well be the same one. It looks a little bit smaller. Yeah, it's a little bit smaller. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, we're going to end the video here. We're going to go home now. We make some dinner, and uh, we could have obviously kept some pike for dinner, but decided not to in this case. We really kind of wanted to get some trout, but um, yeah, you know, maybe next time. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's just kind of what me and Meg really get up to on our days off. When we have days off together, we just go out fishing and a bit of camping in the rooftop tent or, you know, on the ground if the weather's permitting. And yeah, so uh, hope you enjoyed it. Meg's second fish. Woo! But you caught three actually, didn't you? Yeah, I lost one though. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you lost one. You might come back here in a couple of days and try and get for some bigger pike. So, uh, Thanks for watching. See you really soon. Take care. Bye, guys.